the period just after the turn of the century in 1900 provided us with one of the most uh, colorful times of, of journalism in terms of the muckraking period of investigative journalism. And uh, it, you know, there, here is a short lecture about the role that they played um, from the turn of the century basically until just before World War I. Hello, this is Professor Harper and another lecture for the online course at Temple University in History of Journalism. So in looking at the investigations that started this out, there were businesses such as Standard Oil, other monopolies that had strangled competition. Um, immigrants were packed into substandard housing. Corruption was widespread in city governments. and the meatpacking industry broke the backs of its workers and delivered unsanitary meat. And these became, you know, the, the areas of investigation for journalists uh, in the early 1900s. McClure's magazine was the, at the forefront, and in January 1903, it trumpeted a, tr a, 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 a trio of writers. Lincoln Steffens, who was the editor of McClure's, wrote about cities and corruption there. Ida Tarbell, who wrote about the corruption of uh, Standard Oil, and Ray Standard Baker, who, among other things, wrote about the corruption within uh, unions and the labor movement. These all appeared in one um, edition of, uh, of McClure's in 1903. And the lead article was The, sh the, sh the Shame of Minneapolis, uh, which might be called The American Contempt of Law. This was uh, written by Lincoln Steffens. Um, also, the editorial which introduced these stories, Ida Tarbell's History of Standard Oil, um, and uh, Ray Standard Baker, who wrote The Right to Work um, about the corruption of labor unions. Altogether, these articles come pretty near showing how universal is this dangerous trait of ours, the editorial in McClure's said. One author who we will study is uh, Jacob Rees, and he was a reporter for the New York Sun. He wrote a series of articles, took photographs for the newspaper, one of the first times that uh, um, you saw investigative journalism and photographs together, and he later turned the book into How the Other Half Lives, and we'll read an excerpt from that. In 1890, in one block in the city of New York, nearly 3,000 people lived in the tenements without a single bathtub. The buildings lacked light and proper ventilation, disease was rampant, and fire hazards existed. Upton Sinclair uh, wrote 90 novels, including Dragon's Teeth, which won the 1943 Pulitzer Prize. His uh, fictional account, uh, The Jungle, was an investigation of the meatpacking industry in Chicago. And he was a, a leftist uh, socialist, and he basically wanted to um, get the workers to revolt against capitalism as a result of all of the problems. Um, and what actually happened is that the Food and Drug Administration uh, issued um, restrictions and, and requirements of the meatpacking industry after the, the jungle was published. He, he, Upton Sinclair, was quoted as saying, I aimed for the head and I hit the stomach. Um, but the experience left him white-faced and thin, partly from undernourishment and partly from horror. He wrote about substandard wages, dangerous uh, conditions, the lack of, of sanitary conditions. Um, meat sales dropped by nearly half within six months and um, Congress passed the, the Pure Food and Drug Act and the Beef in, in, uh, uh, Inspection Act of 1907. But the investigators went too far. David Phillips wrote The Treason of the Senate in 1906 for Cosmopolitan and in that he attacked 21 U.S. Senators for their support of cotton, oil, rail, and other monopolies of that era. Unfortunately, the article contained many inaccuracies and, and basically put investigative journalism into a bad light. 
Teddy Roosevelt, for example, was the one who coined the term muckrakers. In 1906, he in invoked the image of the man with the muckrake in Paul Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. He said, there it said, the muckraker was, quote, the man who could look no way but downward and continued to rake to himself the filth of the floor. So at the time, uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, claimed many of the investigators as his friends and used them when he was commissioner of uh, the police department in New York City and later governor of, of New York to put into uh, place a number of laws to make things better. Um, but he found that the muckrakers had become too negative and had made too many inaccuracies uh, over time so that they only looked at what was bad and provided no solutions to those problems. So that's what we have for today. And thanks very much. We'll see you online.